How does the leader of an organization reestablish trust, maybe in two parts? First with the community that they serve, and then second part, maybe internally, how do, they, how do you reestablish trust within your own employees? Colleen, could you start off, please? Um, I think it goes with um, a very uh, honest and open communication with people. Um, there are ways that you can get to your employees by having regular staff meetings. We had what we called the fireside chat with the chief where we would make appointments at all the area offices and the staff could talk directly. We would have one-on-one -on -one communication and that was customary in our department um, and so it allowed for staff to hear directly from, from the department head. Um, it wasn't always filtered information. Um, going through a director, an assistant director, and a supervisor. So we would do that. Um, we also established on our website um, a question and answer. People could pose questions and then they'd get a response a week later about, well, why is this going on or why is that inequity going on? Or, and so people could get regular feedback about what was going on. So they had a regular forum to address problems. Um, I think it's just a matter of, of being out there, being open. Um, talking with people, reminding them of what the mission is, um, being a hard worker yourself, um, showing people that you also are um, very much involved in what they do and you care about them. I think those are fundamentals and oh, it takes time, it takes time. It's a, it's a process. Um, going through something is a process and it does take time. Hey, Chief, and specifically I'd be interested in uh, the riots from 1992. How did LAPD, what were their strategies to try to redevelop relationships and trust with the community? I think first uh, acknowledging that uh, there was that gap between what the community thought and what the police department thought the community thought. Um, and really getting out there, as the chief said, community meetings, and not so much to say anything but more to listen. And that is a critical piece that I think too often we're all action people, doers, that we don't listen. And that's the perception of the, the community. But then once we hear what they're saying, to come back and close the loop and give them feedback and follow up on what they've asked us to do or the concerns that they had or the questions they raised. I think owning it, taking accountability for the situation the way it is and moving forward from there. Once you take that accountability and you say that you own the problem and you're, you're committed to fixing it, then all of a sudden you start to build a team internally and in the community as well. Uh, the communication piece is critical and I think some of the ways you address that, uh, a citizen's police academy in, in the policing context, it's tremendous. If you can get the people that are most angry, that are throwing the rocks at you the hardest, bring them into a citizen's police academy and show them the challenges. Show them how the department operates, the limitations you have, what you can say and what you can't say, and, and give them kind of a quick overview, a 30,000 foot view of the department. By the end of those seven weeks or 10 weeks or however long you make it, you have people coming out of there that at the very least will say, you know, there's a lot of things now I understand and know that I didn't know before. And at best, you may get now people who were the rock throwers are now very big supporters. Uh, and I've seen that over and over again. Having a sensitivity to the, for the community that you serve, whether it's language, whether it's culture. Uh, you look at a, any of our, our big cities in Southern California and you have more cultures coming together in one place than you do in probably anywhere else in the country. And that's a challenge in itself because you talk about working with the community, but each community sees themselves as separate and distinct with different needs and priorities than the community next door. So that is a big challenge in the context that, that we face where you're dealing with people in crisis as a matter of just doing business. That people don't call you when things are going well. They call you when their world is upside down. So you lay that on top of the fact that you've got um, the challenges that you're facing historically. Uh, with cable TV, you have the ability now that you, we never had before to be able to reach out to an audience that's limited for the most part to the city that we serve and to be able to, for the people you can't get with the Citizens Police Academy, to be able to put shows on there that showcase different aspects of the department over time. And again, you're hitting, you're hitting them a little bit at a time, but you're building an understanding that otherwise you may never be able to get. So I think there's things like that using technology, but again, being there, owning it, uh, taking, 
taking uh, accountability for what's going on and for the for the uh, the game plan, the business plan moving forward is a critical aspect. Acknowledging what happened in the past and not trying to defend it, but saying that it is the past. Mistakes were made on both sides, and then moving forward, that tears down some of that animosity that will otherwise prevent you from being able to move forward. Great, thank you. And Doctor, how how does the Catholic Church regain trust with not just their their parishioners, but but the community as a whole? Well, I would say that that uh, the church it's not a an accomplished. Uh, fate at this point. There, there's plenty more that, that the church has to do. But some of the things that the church did do well uh, was, first of all, acknowledging, acknowledging the problem, finally. Um, it had been going on for many years before 2002, when the Boston Globe did its series of investigative articles. And the church treated it, and I'd recommend this, you treat restoring trust, if you've, if you've lost it, or at least the perception of it, you treat it as another mission, another part of what you have to do. And they looked both internally and externally for some expert advice and guidance on to what things that they could do. And they listed them so that, so that everybody kind of knew that these are the things that we're gonna be focused on. These are the things that we're gonna do. We're gonna take these actions and we are going to let people see what these actions are. We're gonna be open and transparent about them. And then we're going to put in an accountability piece in which uh, this, their particular accountability piece was to have external audits, um, the, which started in 2003 and continue to this day, about the programs and, and procedures that the church instituted, like background checks of, of clergy and volunteers who work with, with children and youth, um, for doing uh, abuse awareness programs for children and, and for adults who work with youth, um, for making certain that priests who shouldn't be in ministry had been removed from ministry. These external audits, while they're not of, of general interest to the public, the people who are interested and involved in, in Catholic activities can see the results of these audits. They, they know that the, the actions have been taken. That coupled with the things that have already been said here, communicating, you know, this is what we're doing, um, showing this is what we're doing, particularly to the naysayers, the, the people with the biggest rocks, um, the victims advocate groups in this case, to let them know, you know we're doing these things. You won't please everybody. There are some people that, that just have a general distrust of, of public organizations, um, or any organization for that matter. But you will make some progress if you have everybody on your team you know, pulling in the same direction. We are going to restore trust by what we say, and more importantly, by what we do.